Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for this exciting announcement. Um, and uh, while I get the pleasure to, to introduce uh, our new head coach, I do want to take a moment uh, to offer a special thanks to Eric Rodell uh, for leading the charge on this search and also to Jimmy Stanton for lending his expertise to the process. Uh, we wouldn't be here today with, without them. So I uh, really appreciate the, the help that they provided. Um, obviously, we're extremely excited to have Mark Wasikowski as our head baseball coach here at the University of Oregon. As we went through our search process, it became very clear um, that it was uh, Mark that was the right person for our job. It's great to have Waz, Lori, uh, Kelsey, and, and Joelle back into the Duck family. So uh, we witnessed uh, what Waz did in his years here, his work ethic, his tremendous amount of energy um, that he brings to work and to this sport every single day. Now, obviously, he has a track record of excellence. Excellence as a recruiter at the highest level, excellence in student athlete development, and excellence in building a championship culture. We've heard from many of our former players who shared their thoughts on Waz, uh, and they're very consistent, uh, and these themes come out. One, how much he cares about his student athletes. Two, how he's an excellent teacher who works hard to develop them to their fullest potential on and off the field. And three, his fierce competitiveness, along with his ability to instill a similar mindset and competitiveness in his players. The bottom line is Waz has a firm commitment to providing a first-class student-athlete experience. Please join me in welcoming our new head coach, Mark Wasikowski. Thank you very much. A uh, lot of familiar faces in the room, which is really, really good to see. I've prepared a statement to begin with uh, and then take questions uh, there following. Um, but first off, uh, I would really like to express my, my thanks um, for my family, my wife, Lori, uh, my two wonderful daughters, Joelle and Kelsey, uh, for embracing the challenges that come with having a husband or a father in the coaching profession and always being there by my side. Um, my mother and father who provided me with the guidance, love and discipline needed to succeed. Um, to Rob Mullins, Eric Rodell for allowing this opportunity to be the head baseball coach at the University of Oregon. Um, and to my mentors, Andy Lopez, uh, George Horton, Mark Hogan, Don Snedden, John Bryant, who prepared me for this opportunity. Thank you all. Um, University of Oregon, uh, you know, it's a very special place for me and my family. Uh, it was very difficult to leave here three years ago, and ironically, very difficult to return. Uh, what made it difficult in both cases are the relationships that are developed both here in Eugene, Oregon, and in West Lafayette, Indiana. That being said, the relationships created during my time as a duck and our love for the University of Oregon and the community and the desire to take this program to the highest level are the reasons why we returned. The standard at the University of Oregon is summarized in one word, championships. On a field, in a classroom, in a community, and in life. Our program will strive to achieve these standards be met on a daily basis, for this is a duck way. We will demand a high attention to detail, embrace the accountability aspect needed to accomplish greatness, and expect the work ethic that allows for success. This program started with a dream and a vision by Pat Kilkenny, Joe Giansante, George Horton, amongst others, and it's yet to be accomplished. Their vision is seeing the Oregon players on the grass at TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska, before winning a national championship is ours. And now it's time to, time to fulfill the dream. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated Magazine. What did your experience at Purdue, how did that benefit you, uh, and what have you learned from there that you can take and implement here? So my experience at Purdue was a fantastic experience, and I appreciate the opportunity given to me uh, by the administration there. The experience there was a situation that I encountered where there were four very down years before they decided to make a coaching change. and. Um, the previous season before I took the job, it was a 10-win season um, for that baseball team. To take over that program uh, was the things I think that I'll be able to carry into this program are some of the keys. One, 
uh, there was no, no fan interest at the games. Uh, we needed to make sure that we understood that, well, we need to do some things on that baseball field to where we drum up the interest of the community. Uh, we put a product out there that is something that people wanted to pay their hard-earned money for, and we expected to, uh, and showed up on a daily basis and said, we're going to do something about it through our work ethic and our attitude and the things that we can control. And so we did, and uh, we were able to make a big difference uh, on the baseball field in my three years in West Lafayette, and I'll be able to carry a lot of those things over here. Uh, welcome back. After all the years that George put in to lay the foundation for what this program wanted to be and still strives to be, what makes you want to take this job knowing how close maybe this program can be to being in Omaha where you want to be? Well, the program was extremely close uh, at one point in time, and there was one play. We were one play away from being in Omaha, Nebraska and stretching on that grass as it was a vision and a dream. Uh, almost be, to be fulfilled at that point, and it wasn't. Now, for what reason, we'll, we'll never know, but the bottom line is it wasn't. And Coach Horton started this program with those other people, and he, he built the program to where it is now. And it's a totally different place than where it was when he took the first uh, run at the program getting to Omaha, Nebraska. He started from the ground and built the program to a tremendous place for us to be able to springboard, springboard forward right now. Yeah, I guess, Coach, uh, how do you perceive kind of the status of the program now and kind of what do you, when you look at the team, kind of what do you think you have to build around? Well, looking at the roster and things of this nature literally will be done in the coming days. Uh, I was less interested in looking at the roster and trying to be a judge of uh, who was contributing and who wasn't. The student athletes will have that opportunity to show that when the time is right. Um, the program is in a very good position. It's a, um, the University of Oregon is thought of worldwide as a leader of an institution. Uh, you know, you can flat out go to Disneyland and find more O's in Disneyland than any other school, uh, branding, color, anything at all that you can find anywhere. And so that's something that literally uh, speaks volumes of what um, the University of Oregon has created. The program itself is at a place where uh, hard-earned uh, hours, or hard-spent hours, I should say, have put it to the place where it is right now. And it's at a tremendous place for us to be able to grow what has already been done here. Uh, not frown upon it, but grow it and take it to another level, which is what Oregon and the community and people around this program, near and dear to the program, want to see. All right, Steve. Mark, um, looks like none of your assistants will be coming here. They've all got other places. Can you talk about kind of what you're looking for and a time frame for you in terms of hiring a staff? Yeah, absolutely. We'll hire the staff. We, we're in, I'm in the process right now of hiring a staff. and doing so and we'll probably have that concluded in the coming days but I'm um, looking at all candidates as options for the staff and the mission of that is to be able to have the staff best suited for the student athletes to get these guys developed for their personal uh, agendas as well as the team agenda and we're going to find the right coaching staff to be able to give us the best chance to win in Omaha Nebraska. Mark Austin Meek with the Register Guard. You mentioned Coach Horton as one of your mentors. Did you have discussions with him when you were considering this job? And philosophically, how are you similar? How are you different? Uh, I did not have discussions with Coach Horton before this uh, job was offered. Uh, I have a good relationship with Coach Horton still and will uh, forever. I mean, he's a special person. And, you know, um, with that being said, um, I did not have any discussions with Coach, though, before the job was offered. Um, well, I mean, you know, I was with Coach Horton for five years. I was with Andy Lopez for 10 years at the University of Arizona, three years at the University of Florida, and I played for him at Pepperdine University. And so um, with all of the mentors that I listed, those were the key people that taught me baseball. Those were the key people that taught me about um, things that maybe were good, things, things that maybe were bad. And so what I can promise this much is this is not going to be a, a George Horton uh, spin or an Andy Lopez spin or a John Bryant spin or a Don Snedden spin or Mark Hogan spin. I mean, it's, it's going to be from what I've learned, good and bad, from all those men. And uh, we can learn from everything that they've done well or not to be able to impose those things on our student athletes and help them ach achieve their goals. That's going to be what it is. It's going to be a, a compile of, of all the greatness and all of the, maybe some of the things that, that uh, we can learn from on the other side as well to put our best foot forward. Left middle, Rick. Rick Morgan, DuckNews.com. Uh, curious, uh, kind of following up on Austin's questions, your philosophy. George was pretty much uh, – 
uh, of pitching first. He wanted pitching and defense. Is that going to kind of be how you approach this in PK Park? Are you going to try and find a little bit more offense as well? Yes and yes. Uh, I want to win with pitching for sure. Pitching and defense is a sustainable product. Uh, and so that's just something that goes along with championship programs. Um, but I also want to see the baseball hit through the gaps. I want to see the baseball hit over the fence. I want to have an exciting offense where people uh, look at it and say, I want to show up to the baseball field because it's fun to go to the field. And fun to go to the field sometimes can be a one to nothing game, but uh, sometimes can also be a 13 to, to, to one game. I won't say 13 to 12 game. Uh, but nevertheless, I want to see the, the offensive players uh, develop at a high level to where the mission for those guys is to show up like men and drive the ball out of a park, um, be able to show, the, show up and, and drive the ball through the gap and expose people with their speed. Uh, the pitching and the defense is how we're going to build it. We're going to have a ton of quality arms as we move forward and the athleticism to defend the field at a super high level. Uh, being at Purdue the past few years, how closely did you keep an eye on Pac-12 baseball? And just what do you think of the conference as a whole right now? You got the defending national champs up the road. You got the number one overall uh, seed in this year's NCAA tournament was a Pac-12 team. What do you see from the competition? Well, the Pac-12 conference is, is a great baseball conference. And it was unfortunate to see that there are no Pac-12 teams in Omaha right now. And as a league, we need to address that. Um, but I can't control the rest of the league. I, I can tell you this much. I still believe it's true that the Pac-12 has won it, uh, double the amount of national championships in baseball as all the other leagues combined if you totaled it up. So uh, I think it's an outstanding baseball conference. Um, it's obviously had uh, UCLA this past year with the number one seed. They're not in Omaha. That tells you how hard it is to get to, get to Omaha. Uh, the Oregon State program at the road has had some tremendous success in recent years. And that's not to be looked past whatsoever. And so uh, the baseball in this area, the baseball in the Northwest, the baseball in the Pac-12 has historically been outstanding, and I believe it will continue to be. Yeah, Coach, on the style of play, specifically speed, I was noticing in the stats last or this season there was one player in double figures with stolen bases last year, two on the year before, and none the year before that. Will there be a more emphasis? Is that an acceptable number for stolen bases for a team? Or will there be a more emphasis for speed, and which helps out in a lot of other areas? You know, uh, it's, That's a very good question. For me, the fir first thing that I'll say to that is, is I, I'm not going to look into the past and try to speculate on what was good or was, wasn't good in terms of when I wasn't here, because I don't know what it was like. And so I would never do that, and I wouldn't do that out of respect to the people that were here, whether it was the head coach or anybody through the organization. That's not fair. Um, but I am a person that wants to steal pay bases. I want, a I, want, I want a program that wants to push the envelope. I want a program that shows up where guys show up every single day um, looking to absolutely not only beat people but do their, to do their best to make a statement that Oregon baseball is for real. And I'm going to follow up on that a little bit. To, if, um, to bring this change about, are you looking to bring different types of student athletes in as recruits, or is it kind of on your job to provide them the teaching to gain, gain that skill? Uh, th both. It's our job to do a great job of recruiting to where we have the skill sets to where we can accomplish those goals. And it's also our job to make sure that we have an outstanding coaching staff in place to where we can teach the student athlete at the highest level. You know, the, the softball program had a full, full house, you know, nine straight uh, region, super regionals. And I hear from a lot of fans, it's the pace of the game, seven innings, pace of the game, that kind of thing. As a general issue, you know, the catcher looking every every pitch for a sign. I know you're not going to be a one man changing the rules, but do you think the ways of speeding up the game that make it a little more exciting or what did you do at Purdue that made it more exciting? Uh, we wanted to dictate the tempo. I think that's a great question. Um, it, we didn't want to slow the game down. We wanted to, to push the envelope on the opponent to where the, if anybody was uncomfortable with the pace of the play, it was because it was too fast. And uh, I like getting the pitch in. I like getting the pitch in before the batter's comfortable. And I like the, the tempo that that tells the pitcher on the mound because I want that guy out there pitching and throwing the baseball with conviction on everything he does. And if he's standing out there uh, waiting for a long time, uh, I don't know, but I wouldn't like that. 
And I want to show, if I'm pitching, I want to show up, I want to get the baseball, and I want to show somebody I'm better than they are.